Here's a fascinating integral with a result that was proved by the great Raymond himself from back in the day. And integrals like these popped up during early research in quantum mechanics as well. So yeah, um, the structure is pretty fascinating and the result is pretty cool as well. So we can take this, we can treat this integral as some integral function of a parameter s, where s is a complex number with real part being greater than 1. Okay, so how do you exactly approach a structure like this? Well, one thing we notice here is that if we write it as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times 1 by e to the x minus 1, dx, then this structure here screams geometric series. But the problem is that a geometric series of this form is not convergent over our uh, interval of integration. However, we can fix that by multiplying upstairs and downstairs by e to the negative x. And that fixes the problem of convergence. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative x uh, times 1 by 1 minus e to the negative x dx. And now the structure you have is that of a infinite series that is in fact convergent on our interval of integration because we know that 1 by 1 minus x can be expressed as an infinite series uh, being the sum over the non-negative integers of x to the k for the absolute value of x being less than 1. So this implies that 1 by 1 minus e to the, ne e to the negative x equals the sum over, again, the non-negative integers of e to the negative kx. So this implies that i of s equals the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative x times the series expansion, the sum over k of e to the negative kx integration with respect to x. And now because these terms out here are independent of the k variable, we can slip them inside the summation. So we we now have the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of x to the s minus 1 times e to the... Now multiplying these two exponentials and factoring out the uh, x in the, in the argument, you have e to the negative k plus 1 times x dx. And now the question is, can we switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators. Well, using Fubini's theorem, yes, we can do that because there are no problems with respect to boundedness or convergence. So we can write this as the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative k plus 1x dx. And the structure here now looks quite similar to <coughs> the gamma function. And viewers of this channel know that the gamma function is my favorite. So it's one of my favorite ways to integrate. And we can introduce the gamma function here by letting this thing here, k plus 1 times x, be equal to t which implies that x equals t by k plus 1, which further implies that dx equals the t by k plus 1. And the limits of integration are not going to be altered by this transformation. So this implies that i of s equals the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity of now x to the s minus 1 becomes t to the s minus 1 divided by k plus 1 to the s minus 1. You have e to the negative t, then you have dt by k plus 1. Now if you multiply these terms in the denominator, then you get the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s minus 1 times e to the negative t dt divided by k plus 1 to the s. And because you're integrating with respect to t, 
this k is just a constant in the t world so you can take it out of the in, uh, take it out of take it out of the uh, integration operator so you have the sum over k of 1 by k plus 1 to the s times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s minus 1 times e to the negative t dt and remember we stated at the uh, beginning of the video that the real part of s is in fact greater than 1 well that means that this structure here is exactly the gamma function evaluated at some complex number s so we have the sum over the non-negative integers of 1 by k plus 1 to the s times gamma s. Now this sum here, if you replace k plus 1 by n, then you can write it as the sum over n, the positive integers of 1 by n to the s, gamma s. And this here, this is the Riemann zeta function, right? So you have the Riemann zeta function times the gamma function, and this equals the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 dx divided by e to the x minus 1, which is quite a beautiful result indeed, and you can have some beautiful results for specific values as well. <laughs> for example, if you let s be equal to 2, then you have the integral from 0 to infinity of x by e to the x minus 1 being equal to zeta 2 is pi squared by 6 and gamma 2 is just 2 factorial which is uh, oh sorry gamma 2 is 1 factorial which is 1 correct yeah so this integral evaluates to pi squared by 6 the the famous ba uh, basal problem and if you let s be equal to 3 for that case you have the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared dx e to the x minus 1 equals zeta 3 times gamma 3 now gamma 3 is 2 factorial which is 2 right and zeta 3 is Apri's constant. So yeah, a couple of really nice results here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.